Hi everyone! It is sound equipment repair time again. This time I have this Shure ULX series wireless system on my bench and something is wrong with this belt pack transmitter. Let's have a look. The receiver is set to group 1, channel 1 and we can see this RF LED lights up so something must be transmitting on this channel like a radio station and I should really pick a different channel but I cannot operate the transmitter at the moment. If I turn it on, we can see backlight and nothing else, but I have seen some random segments before. And also we can see this battery level indicator appeared and antenna, and if I turn the transmitter off, that disappears, and if I turn the transmitter on again, it appears again. So, I believe it is transmitting, but something is wrong with the display. Now, let's look at the spectrum. The analyzer is set to show from 550 to 600 MHz, which is slightly wider than the band of the system. And I'm not sure what this receiver is detecting now. It is quite sensitive, so the source must be below the noise floor here, at least with the current settings. And this is not the point. The point now is that the transmitter seems to be working fine. Here is the tone. Let's detect the peak. Here it is, 556.33 MHz, which is correct for group 1, channel 1. And now, if I press and hold the set button for 10 seconds, the transmitter should go into so-called uh, master list mode, and the default frequency there is slightly different so we should see it change, and the battery level indicator here should disappear. Let's do that. I'm holding the button. Let's see. In a few seconds, yeah, it changed now. And uh, let's see what the frequency is now. 554 megahertz. And now let's do it again. I press and hold. We should wait for about 10 seconds, and we should see it jump back. Here we are, and the battery level indicator appeared here again. So, this confirms that this transmitter must be working, and the problem is with the display. Here is this transmitter taken apart. And there is a small board-to-board -board connector right here, so we can pull these boards apart, like so. And I have seen problems with several transmitters of this model before, with cracked soldering joints around this connector. And I inspected this unit under a microscope, and I don't see any problems at all. So, at this point, I am inclined to blame the LCD controller chip, which is right under this display. I had to replace a few with similar symptoms before, and I have a couple of new chips here. So, I am tempted to just replace it and see what happens. The LCD here is mounted in a socket, so it is very easy to remove. And now we need to remove this backlight which is also quite easy, just desolder two pins. Here is the desoldered backlight, and now we can see the controller chip, which is Philips PCF8576CH. And it is a bit tricky to desolder, because plastic connectors are right next to it, and we need to avoid melting them in the process. I've done this before, several times, by using hot air and covering the connectors with aluminium foil. So I am thinking about doing it this way again. Here is my way of covering the connectors. This should work fine. The original chip is gone. Now let's solder the NXP branded replacement. I usually do that by cleaning the pads first with a wick and then using my soldering iron with the smallest tip I have. So, I soldered the chip and the backlight, and look at this! 
it is working. How cool is that? So the LCD driver chip was the problem. The transmitter is back together and is working fine. Thanks for watching. Bye.